Bills. J Dog back. And we're not going over questions today, goddammit. We're going for long overdue goddamn video. It's finally here by popular demand. A lot of people did ask me, and uh, <clears throat> I kind of figured it was popular because, um, yeah, so the only one I've done so far was top black. Did I do top 20 black metal elves? I think it was 20, right? Did I do 10 or 20? I think it was 20. Uh, but LS did top 20 uh, death metal albums. People were fucking asking out the ass. And I mean to do, mean to do. Um, <clears throat> but it just took a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more time, actually, to fucking dig out my shit. As opposed to just fucking hitting record and goddamn <laughs> bringing up the next video live read off questions. So a little bit more time consuming, a little bit of prep work, goddamn it. Pretty half assed prep work, not gonna lie. I didn't spend a shitload of fucking time. So top 20 death, death metal albums. Is what I picked. I just grabbed CDs because you can see behind me, they're all out for the quarters is more convenience. Uh, LPs are cooler to show, goddammit. But the way I see it, I wasn't going to show each one one by one. I'll just flash the goddamn cover. Uh, maybe talk about it a little bit. Just whatever comes off the top of my head. Maybe nothing, goddammit. We'll see. Um, the LPs are just a little bit more inconvenient, you know, because they start at the top, they go to the bottom, and it's they're, they're all scattered across the uh, thing. They're in alphabetical order. Just a little bit more hard to uh, pull them and then put them away. So just for time restraints. I pulled the fucking uh, the CDs and and I'm pretty sure looking uh yeah I, yeah literally every single one of these I own an LP too most of them I picture this too come on there's not a picture of this in existence if I own vinyls of every single one of these because goddamn full full disclosure you're gonna put your goddamn top twenty you better fucking own a hard copy don't give me this it's in your top twenty your one of your favorites of all time. And your dumbass doesn't even own a fucking hard copy. That's poser shit, brah, brah. What are you talking about? I understand you can't buy a physical hard copy of everything. Maybe funds are tight. Maybe you don't fucking have the room. Maybe the wife's yelling at you. But you don't buy your favorites. I mean, minimally buy your fucking faves. And then the rest, digital download or, or, or rip the bands off by listening to it on YouTube. Do whatever the fuck else you're going to do. Whatever the fuck the kids do nowadays, right? Well, minimally, you better own your goddamn fucking faves. Otherwise, they ain't in your top. You don't get to make a top list. So all the other guys, which I'm sure there's a ton out there, uh, who have their top metal albums, you better be flashing a hard copy, brah, brah. CD, cassette, or vinyl. I don't give a fuck which, but it better be one. Otherwise, shut your fucking video down. Get it yanked off YouTube. You don't get to make a goddamn list. Didn't even support the buy-ins. Boy, I did it. I bought it. I bought it. I'll believe it when I see it, goddamn it. <clears throat> other couple disclaimers. I didn't pick anything that, uh, for example, Carcass. Carcass would have easily made it. So to me, Carcass is not a death metal band. They became a death metal band on Necroticism. Rika Putrefaction and Symphonies of Sickness are not a death metal band. They're not. It's a fucking gore grind band. They are the first gore grind band. They are the ones that created gore grind music. So I didn't put them in there. Things like Terrorizer. I didn't put them in there. It's grindcore. Repulsion Horrified. Easily would have made it in there. I didn't put it in here. Why? I don't think consider Horrified uh, a death metal record. I consider it a grindcore record. Between Napalm Death, Scum, and Horrified, I consider those the first two grindcore records in existence. Now, I understand back then with guys that were around, well, you didn't know. Okay, but we do now. We have all the subgenres like that. What would it be classified? It's classified as grindcore. Maybe when it came out, they just call it death metal because all the terminology wasn't down. And again, it's a kind of a, it's a little, uh, uh, confusing to me of why uh, people find this hard to figure out. The reason there are all these subgenres and shit weren't so much back then is because metal was so fucking new. Horrified came out in 1986. Metal was around basically for six fucking years. We already been over this. It pretty much started in 1980. You can argue Sabbath, but that's getting that's getting a stretch. You, most people are going to call that classic rock. Not officially metal yet, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a bunch of fucking hippies. Don't get me wrong. I do consider Black Sabbath the first metal band myself. But to get technical, it was really around when fucking Iron Maiden, Motorhead, Judas Priest, Venom and shit were cranking out records when Exciter. And it, that's that very, very early 80s. So when metal was okay, this is a this is a subgenre now from rock and roll. It's it's we now need a subgenre as opposed to Prior to that Sabbath and shit, you could just, eh, just throw it all on a rock and roll. That's kind of how it was looked at, right? So, metal starting basically in 1980, to keep it fucking simplified. Horrified came out. It's, it was around for six years. They fuck, it's like a kid in kindergarten. So, of course, there wasn't all these subgenres. They didn't need to be because it was so fucking new. Everybody had their own goddamn identity. So, now, 
43 years later, because that's how long the genre has basically been around, it needs subgenres. And we know, based on styles, we can put it in. The Pulsion's a fucking grindcore band. That we know now. We know in 1986, if you were there, if you were cool enough, which is pretty goddamn cool if you were there. Um, man, I was I was there, but I was one years old. So, not there, but but alive. I understand that it wasn't being said that like that then. But, you're still in the scene, you know what's going on. You should get what the fuck I goddamn mean. So, that's that. And also, one other thing. It's top 20, but I actually have 22 picks because... Uh, I was scrolling wrong and I miscounted and I refused to put any back. I was like, they're all fucking equal, goddammit. And another thing, too, is like I said, I did kind of a quick skim. It's been about 10 minutes. I wasn't going to spend an hour digging and digging and digging and skim my rack two to three times, but pretty quickly. Uh, some just I knew were out top of my head that would automatically be in there that jumps right the fuck out in front of me. Um, so there is a, there's a possibility I uh, missed a couple that would definitely have been in there. And then there is also ones, well, why didn't he put this in there? Again, can to keep it to 20. There was definitely ones I wanted to put in there, uh, quite a few, that I uh, just had to leave out because for obvious fucking reasons. And if you don't like my goddamn picks, that's fine. Make your goddamn channel put your fucking picks. So, technically, yeah, top 20 greatest death metal albums. Yeah, we'll call it that in this fucking channel. Uh, is that's, you know, whatever. That's the, the greatest to me. But again, that's me. So you can say just my top 20 faves. I understand there's going to be some people that highly disagree and. Again, that's fucking fine. Make your goddamn fucking channel. We can come over your crappy ass channel. We can fucking see what your what your shit takes are. So I'm sure there's plenty of them in there. Goddamn it, it's probably a bunch of doom shit that ain't even death metal. Goddamn it. Hopefully that at the worst. Fucking hopefully some no yo boy fucking deathcore crap. That ain't death metal, bra bra. Don't be putting that deathcore bullshit in death metal. Make sure to clarify that. That ain't even pff, ain't even close to the same goddamn thing. Anyway, without further fucking do, and it's an alphabetical order too. So I just pulled it in letter order. So this is in no particular order as far as. 1 through 20, as far as top bottom, because that would be really fucking hard to do. I ain't fucking doing that. Just consider them all in the top goddamn 20. And, uh, but just by letter. So, first and foremost, the only album I like by them, they get, you know, beat up a lot on this channel, but I do love this goddamn record, and to me, is an absolute death metal must if you claim you goddamn like the genre. You, you know any of those fucking new core, death core fucking canoes, they don't like this shit. It's too fucking rough. It's too raw. It's too tough. For their fucking badge. That is Autopsy. Sever Survival. First album. Great. Raw. Bass is fucking amazing. Um, then they became, in my opinion, a death doom man. Some death metal elements here and there. Sounds death metal. Sounds crude. Sounds raw. Sounds ugly. Sounds nasty. I give them that. But even on Mental Funeral, like, I was like, only like a couple of songs are kind of like two, three songs are upbeat. Holding my attention. I'm like, the rest is just boring. Yeah, it sounds cool. But cool sound means dick if it ain't fucking it's got some beats, got some jams. Fuck yeah, bob the head. I, I don't want to go to sleep. Music's supposed to fucking move my soul, grab me, grab me by the goddamn throat. Not fucking like send me down for a fucking uh, bedtime story. Uh, that's not that's not what metal's supposed to goddamn do. So this has it all. It has some parts that are a little slow and doomy, but it's just it's just small parts. I don't mind it throwing it here or there, but I was like the whole goddamn fucking song. Favorite songs on here would have to be Disembowel, Service for a Vacant Coffin, Probably Ridden with Disease, World Gas. Uh, they're all goddamn bangers, but probably my favorite two would be Disembowel and Service for a Vacant Coffin. I would definitely have to say those goddamn two. Next to goddamn line, The Almighty. One album band. I mean, technically, in my opinion, Autopsy is one album band. <laughs> But they got more shit on the goddamn uh, under their band or rates. But this band, one full length album band, and it is definitely one of the death metal greats, greatest death metal albums of all time. Easily, I think. Baphomet, the dead shall inherit. Even covered by goddamn Dying Fetus. You know, and I always wonder uh, Dying Fetus covered, uh, which song did they, did they cover? Boiled in Blood? Streaks of Blood, I believe they covered. And who did Boiled in Blood? Somebody did cover Boiled in Blood, I believe. Can't think of who the fuck it is. But I always, I've always wondered how many of those goddamn fetus posers, because you know goddamn dying fetus attracts a lot of goddamn fucking posers, um, like fan base wise How many of them even fucking know who Baphomet is? Know that album? Own, own that album. That's a goddamn litmus test. That's if you know you're a real fetus fan. Are you a fetus fan, meaning death metal fan, or are you a fetus fucking poser? You don't own this record, you're a fetus goddamn poser in my goddamn book. You're one of the guys showing up in the sports jerseys, 
One of the guys with the sideways fucking flat brim caps with the goddamn sticker still on that motherfucker, too, to top it all off. Baggy fucking blue jeans hitting the court right before the show showing up like that, goddammit. And liking death core and stupid shit like that on top of it. You're one of those guys if you don't if you don't own this guy damn record. Because that should just, just be automatic. This was before Dying Fetus. They covered the fucking thing. It's not an obscure pick. It's an underground death metal release, but it's been reissued 10 million times. Oh, I know, because it's coming through Hellside Bangers all the motherfucking time. Um, I think we're currently sold out of it, but it'll be back in stock. We always, every time we do a peaceful order, we get them in, they fly out the door, because people that know what's up fucking buy it. So that there you go, goddammit. You're a fetus poser if you don't know Baffin made the dead shot on here, goddammit. That's right, I said it, goddammit. I meant it. Next, this is probably number one, well, number one, number two. It's the fuck up there, but quite possibly death, the greatest death metal album of all motherfucking time. So the way I see it is goddamn fucking Cannibal Corpse. That's right, the CC, goddammit. You have every tw top 20 has CC in there. Otherwise, you're just fucking stupid. No goddamn fact. Two of me later, goddammit. Look at those sign skis, too, in gold. Gold cigs. Uh, I mean, do I have anything to say anything about this? I mean, dude, right down, uh, the, the drums sound the best on it. Chris's voice is fucking over the top great. It's that low vocal, but still sounds nobody. It's got like that fucking echoey. Kanye always called it the eagle vocals. I don't know what the fuck, or do you call, him the e call it eagle or, uh, I think it was eagle. The, ooh, he said he, when he went up to Chris Barnes, he said it to him at a pool table. So who the fuck is this asshole? Security kicked him out. That was back when I think, I think Tombs was the new album. He always called it Tombs. Um. Kanye didn't even like Cannibal Corpse. He thought um, he thought Eating Back to Life was pretty good. He's like, yeah, it's got one song put to them death. Fuck you. He'd always say that. Uh, he's like, that that's good. He's like, but Tombs, Tombs is fucking great, man. The, the fucking, uh, he's like, the, the, the vocals are so fucking great and over the top. Uh, so he always liked uh, Tomb, Tomb the Mutilated, call it Tombs. But uh, I mean, yeah, to me, I mean, come on, dude. It's got Hammer Smash Face, I Come Blood. Fucking necro pedophile, which I wish those goddamn guys would fucking play that live. That's one of my favorite. I mean, uh, entrails ripped from a virgin's cunt. I mean, just right down the lyrical content too. Now that now that would the thing is is it would still be offensive to like newcomers that don't know what death metal is. I mean, that's got some appalling ass fucking lyrics. Um, as opposed to if you read something by like Vader or something, which is great. It's like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Um, you look at fucking suffocation, Transformers cover, a goddamn effigy of the forgotten. It's, who cares? Shit like Cannibal, that's what appealed to me. I'm like, this is fucking, me. this is holy fuck. This is extreme. This is sick. This is brutal. This is heavy. That's what I knew as a kid. And then, and then all this stupid shit comes about. Slipknot's brutal, bro. What's heavier than Pantera? And then you got this. Nasty as can be cover. Nasty as can be lyrics. Nasty as can be fucking vocals. Fucking love how the drums and blasts fucking sound on it. Just all around, just nastiness. And you got idiots saying that shit. And then on the other hand, you got the elitist tough guys. Caval, fuck yeah. Nothing but Vlad Tepes mutilation Belkatir over here, bro. And you get those fucking goddamn box of chocolate boys fucking sloth from the goddamn Goonies. Fucking goddamn fucking bubbles from fucking trailer park boys. Oh, you know, I don't like them because... That's the stuff that gets sold in hot public. You know, it's only demos that are 10 made that we have in our trailer park. And if any, anybody just doesn't have my phone number, doesn't get it, and it's supposed to sound like shit, and there's no goddamn riffs. You get that other idiot clientele when they rip on Cannibal because it's, um, it's too big. It got popular. Still the real shit, bra Sends Motorhead home on a goddamn stretcher as far as extremity and shit. What, what mom's gonna like, goddamn it. Sell that in Hop Topic. Play it at my gym all the fucking time. So don't be getting popularity bullshit, goddamn it. It's still one of the greatest of all time. So yeah, top 20. If I see your goddamn shitty top 20 list, probably shitty too. It's definitely shitty if they don't got Cannibal in there. Cannibal something. Uh, then it ain't the top 20. So don't even make a top 20 of Cannibal in there. Cannibal on the goes in top 20. It's known fact. Top 20 death metal list. Cannibal something's in there. I don't give a fuck which one. Put something in there, goddammit. Oh, by the way, too, another goddamn, uh, um, just, just, just so you know, for the thing, I purposely only picked one record for each band, then double pick. So, you know, I could easily pick Vile or, or Eating Back to Life and shit like that. 
Um, but I just, I didn't want to pick multiple albums because I wanted to get different bands. So just so in case you happen to give a fuck. Oh man, this is who we got some greatness coming up here too. Satanic fucking greatness. And god damn, I know them fucking canoes don't know this one. <laughs> Most fetus posers don't know them. They got true fetus fans like fucking know this one. God damn, this is next to DSI, god damn it. Don't worry, DSI's coming, god damn it. I mean, I'm not not like I'm spilling the beans. You know what's in there. Come on, you're stupid if you fucking don't, or you don't watch my goddamn channel. This is up there. This is the only other band. Fest Dead sliding in there too, um, that has the hate of fucking Deicide, the anger of Deicide, and the lyrics, and just how it came off and felt. Best fucking full length God by them. Oh, another goddamn thing too. I didn't pick any demos. So the demo of this band, which is a CD, um, I like it about equally as much, maybe more. It's it, it's always been a flip a coin, but also too, pick no goddamn demos. This is studio albums, top 20 death metal albums. So the fuck no. That is goddamn Centurion Corazonic Chaos guys. Look at those slick ass cigs. Seth and Patrick. Never got the honor to see um Centurion, but um I met them in uh Seth's on 2001 when uh they joined Severe Torture. Centurion temporarily broke up. Seth uh is weird because Seth sings for this, loved his voice. Seth does drums for Severe Torture, but sings for Centurion. Patrick played bass in both. Uh, very, very, very cool guys. As a matter of fact, they're playing this coming on Maryland Death Fest, too. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, hoping to hit up with them again. Last time I saw them was, what, 2016. They came up to our stand hanging out with all this. All this guys, severe torture, cool as fuck. Dennis, all of them. Um, and I'll definitely going to ask them to shoot a video. I love those guys. Fucking awesome as fuck. Cool, cool fucking dudes. Both great bands, severe torture, feasting on blood. Oh, man. That almost that was skeeting by a dick here. It's not in the top 20, but it was there. It almost made it in. Says it's fucking hard. Oh, that's another fucking banger. But that's when I got to meet them, and um, I brought my Centurion to sign. But Hell's got the honor to fucking reissue this on CD. This is the original Full Moon pressing. I have the Hell's pressing, of course, too. And then we did uh, LPs, and only 100 pictures. God damn it, long sold out. I'm sure you missed the fuck out. Favorite songs on here. Holy fuck, Ski, it's a fucking hard one. But God damn, the law of burning. You cannot go along with that, God damn it. Opening trap, damned and dead. Fucking banger. Let Jesus bleed. I mean, come on. That tells you everything you need to fucking goddamn know. <sighs> and probably soul theft. Soul theft. But, oh, man, it's 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 a hard one. Everything. All killer. Nine tracks. Number of the devil, goddammit. 18 is actually nine. Nine fucking tracks of pure fucking satanic brutality. Doesn't get much better than that, goddammit. Destroy everything, and it does destroy even the shit I do, like, that has come out in the last 20 goddamn fucking years. And yeah, I mean, it meant it, goddamn it. Next up. Best fucking goddamn metal release of all time to come out of Canada. Now, I know goddamn the old heads are gonna fucking just their jaws are gonna fall on the floor from me saying that. That's fine. Whatever. Make your goddamn list. You know, when the old heads, they think Slaughter, they think Exciter, they think Razor, they think Sacrifice. Don't get me wrong. Bangers. Bra -bra, I love them, too. Not taking anything away from them, but this is number one top 20 death metal albums. But this, for me, is just my favorite death metal album. I mean, my favorite metal album. Forget just death metal. Favorite metal album to ever come out of Canada with the first album being almost trying to edge it out. But I always resort back to that. This is goddamn no introduction. Cryptopsy, none so vile. Again, every track. All motherfucking killer, no fucking filler. Pretty much impossible to even fucking pick a goddamn uh, fave. I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, all greatness, all motherfucking greatness, right down to the, some of the coolest shit ever. Who the fuck to this day sounds like Lord Worm's vocals on um, None So Vile, even on Blasphemy Made Flesh? Again, Blasphemy, super fucking close. Open Face Surgery, one of the greatest goddamn songs ever. The longest ongoing best death metal scream of all fucking time in the middle of that goddamn song. Ain't nobody's got that beat. Not even Sheepdog from fucking Razor. Well, Sheepdog had some pretty cool fucking long, long ass screams. Goddamn. Worm out edged them. For sure. Last We Made Flesh. Goddamn, uh, None So Vile. Who the fuck vocally sounds like that? Crickets? I can't think of anybody. And then Flo's drum? Come on, dude. Come on. I mean, I don't even need to say anything about it. Fucking complete greatness. Death Metal Masterpiece here, right here. Oh, it's automatic, goddammit. You say you like underground music. 
You come over here, you say you like underground stuff, you better fucking have this one. Why? Death Metal Masterpiece. Technically a first generation death metal band. Uh, well, not even technically, they just are. Because uh, like first generation death metal bands. So I need to go down the goddamn fucking list again. But it's demo bands included in there too. I mean, but so you think Possessed, you think Massacre, you think Insanity, you think your fucking Obituary. Necrovore, Fatal, and also this goddamn fucking band and a million others. Slaughter Lord, that'd be first generation death metal. You know, a lot of the first generation death metal has kind of is like sort of like death thrash, but it's still kind of like some more like death metal in the in the in the um sense of kind of like possessed death, obviously. You know, Scream Bloody Gore, that's first generation goddamn death metal. First generation death metal band, especially because yeah, their demo's starting in. I mean, King says it's like fucking 85 or so. I think that might be a getting a pinch carried away. I think that's when they were tuning their guitars and, you know, singing in mom's basement. But uh, as far as first goddamn demo, which is my motto, Big D's motto, one of the things that I do agree with Big D on, your band started when your first demo came out. First demo was 86, Evil Side of Religion. But goddamn it, albums, death metal, luck of the corpse, goddamn it. Look at those goddamn cigs. Still looking fresh and slick as fuck from... 2000, that was when I first met him. So I've known King for goddamn, uh, 23 goddamn years now. Another reason why this is in there, um, as far as like when I rip on guys, because it represents underground metal. It's an easier to get into death metal album. You know how some shit, like I can understand why someone wouldn't like Reek of Faction. I can understand why somebody wouldn't like I Want to Go Gotha. I can understand why someone wouldn't like Mortician. There's certain shit. I'm not, I'm not a fucking idiot. I, was like, I get why someone doesn't like this. Rochevore. I get why somebody wouldn't like that. I love them, but I, I can understand why someone doesn't. That, if you like heavier music, not really, dude. You can't push King and Steve, what are you saying? Yes, you can. You damn sure can with the goddamn fucking lyrics. And it's just got the catchy riffs where it's got, like, again, first generation death metal, so it's got that pinch of fucking thrash in there. Dude, it's just easy to bang the head, tap the foot, fucking just want a goddamn air guitar. Don't give me that shit. You like underground music, you like Deceased. What did I tell you? Fucking any of these channels that are talking, if they're deer in headlights, dick up their fucking ass, one dick in the ass, one dick in the mouth. On the following bands, Deceased, Nunslaughter, Sadistic Intent, Disaster, Hemorrhage, Denial of God, underground fucking bangers that are not super obscure, so you got no fucking excuse not to hurt them. Not to mention, we've been, we've been around for goddamn all of those, if not over 30 years, pushing it. I mean, who's the newest newest buck in that category? It's probably either Hemorrhage or Denial of God. And yeah, they've been around 30 years too, goddamn it. At least all my demos and shit are damn goddamn close. Um, So been around forever. Tons of fucking releases. And that's just all super solid shit. Again, I, you're not a poser because you don't necessarily like something. But it's definitely questionable if you don't like those. And it's also, you damn sure at least better fucking hurt them. Because it's like, what, how have you been in... Dude, you couldn't... It's not possible you've been in the underground music for any appreciable amount of time. And those just... Went over your head like a fucking plane. Like you just have no... I've never heard of them. That's fucking stupid. So cut the shit, goddammit. Next in line. No goddamn fucking, uh, no goddamn introduction needed. And I personally picked the first album because talking greatest death metal albums, people are going to fucking piss and whine over the fourth one and argue, which is fine. M M uh, Serpents of Light is probably my favorites, but honestly, it's, it, it pretty much is a coin toss between Serpents of Light and the debut album. Look at all those fucking goddamn signatures too, back from, uh, 2001, I believe it was. They put the years on them too. Um, so DSI, DSI, this is, come on, dude, don't even come over here saying you don't like this. You want to say something stupid, like you don't like Once Upon the Cross or something. Maybe you're one of the old heads and they're changing a little bit. Glenn changed his voice. Fine, whatever. Don't come over here and saying this album sucks. You, you look straight up fucking bubbles from goddamn, uh, that's just what I think of. I see those big, big glasses. No, you know, I don't really like stuff like DSI. I like the pussy shit. You know, I like the stuff that's as heavy as Pantera. Because, you know, nothing's heavier than that. How'd you like those baggy overalls and whir, 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 on Slipknot? That's the stuff I like. Oh, but and then the other guys, you know, I don't really like the DSI stuff. It was kind of childish. 
I really like that boring as fuck Paradise Lost Later albums and those snoozy fucking autopsy albums that people call death metal, but it's just pure fucking slow boredom. Guess I was just kind of stupid. That's what the fuck you sound like when you're talking shit about this goddamn album. Again, all killer. No goddamn. No fucking filler. But favorite songs, Sacrificial Suicide is easily, easily, easily one of my favorite fucking songs of all motherfucking time. So that have to be probably number goddamn fucking one. Number two, DSI, DSI, brah, brah. The Lord should stand before myself. Got that right, goddamn it. Who the fuck don't know that? Putting a fucking fake piece of shit before yourself. Tells me pure stupidity. Got to speed this along, goddamn it. Uh, next goddamn in line. Goddamn, Sig's all over too. Looking forward to seeing him on MDF. Best fucking death metal album. Oh, motherfucking time out of goddamn Sweden. Dismember, Like an Ever Flowing Street, debuted album. If you don't like this, get lost, get fucked, suck a fucking goddamn dick. Go listen to your goddamn uh, Chelsea Grin or whatever the fuck these idiots are talking about these days. Override the Overture, one of the goddamn greatest death metal songs ever fucking written. My fucking goddamn head exploded when I saw on the last, it'll be the second to last now, Evil Incarnate album. I believe it's called The Population Agenda. Good fucking album. Not quite as good as Blow the Saints, but what what the fuck is, goddamn it. Um, they covered Override the Overture. And I wasn't following the track list once it came up. Like, holy fuck! The only other band that ever did that was Dead of Night from Ohio. Fantastic demo band only. Open Hills does demo on fucking vinyl one of these days. Trying to work out the kinks, but some bullshit involved. Don't even want to get it. I'll get pissed off even t- thinking about it. Love that goddamn demo. Dead of Night. Now, it's not recorded at all, but they played it live when I was at the show, early 2000s. Uh, that was the only time I heard somebody... You know what? People don't cover Dismember in general that much. I mean, Entrails did on their demo, uh, Casting Garden. Fantastic goddamn banger. But Override the Overture is probably my favorite Dismember song. Shit, that might even be my favorite sweetest death metal song ever, period. Love that goddamn song. Soon to be dead. Fucking close, close, close up there, goddamn it. Um, but uh, as far as recorded versions, the band's recorded it. Override the Orchard, Evil Incarnate Rock, fucking request. Evil Mike, he knew what the fuck was I damn up. Here we go, fucking homeboys, sideways caps. Get your goddamn fucking uh, get, get your goddamn fucking beers toasted to this one. I know you agree on this one. Goddamn it's true metalist. Don't be stupid. Don't be fucking stupid. Don't be sleeping on this. This album is a fucking masterpiece. It gets jammed regularly to this goddamn day. My favorite album by them. I wouldn't say easily because Killing on Adrenaline is, is close by. Dying Fetus. Destroy the opposition. Look at these fucking SIGs back then. Original lineup. Well, it wasn't the original, original lineup, but it's the lineup really. I, I thought their best lineup. John Gallagher, Jason, whatever the fuck his last name is. Sparky, whatever the fuck his last name is. And Kevin Talley. Um, you know what's cool about this too? This is the Japanese pressing. It's got the bonus track, Reduced to Slavery. I bought this CD when it first came out. It was right when Hells was coming out. Uh, we got them from Relapse. We did a trade or whatever, right? I got rid of that version. John Gallagher, back when he was accessible, didn't want to do my YouTube channel, Grand, there's no way he fucking remembers me, but whatever. We were talking to him at shows and, uh, you know, met him several times, signed all my stuff, as you can see. Uh, it was even after that, but met him the first time. Long story short, uh, when this just came out, we knew about the Japanese bonus track, this, and, uh, we told him we want to get one. He's like, I, I think I have a couple copies. He's like, here's my email. Email when I get home. He sold me, Eric and Chase, one, three copies for just a cost. I think they were 30 bucks a piece. We, I, I guess PayPal them or Alien Cash. I don't remember. This is fucking 23 years ago, whatever the fuck it was. And, and he sent them. This is what I have. So I got this straight from John Gallagher, Japanese bonus track. Uh, Stand up dude. I'm surprised he gave his message. Granted, they weren't as big back then and shit like that, too. But because met John several times. Again, I told on this channel, very first vinyl 12 inch record I ever bought was Dying Fetus Grotesque Impalement 12-inch. And I had all them signed. So that was the first time I met him. I probably met him one other time after that. And then, uh, again, for this minute, because when I got in the mail, the next show, I had them all sign it. So I had them several times. Um, but that was really, really cool, John. But Killing on Adrenaline is very, very, very close. And honestly, maybe one step back that, I love Purification Through Violence, which is more raw, just straight death metal, where it wasn't as polished yet and, and professionally played. I mean, Blunt Force Trauma. Skull fucked. I mean, that shit is fucking great. Raped over the altar. Bangers. Again, true death heads. 
Don't let that goddamn crowd fool you. Don't get me wrong. That crowd needs a serious, just go to the show. <laughs> Flame throw grenades. <laughs> Fucking flat rims flying everywhere. It needs one of those. I'm not denying that. I feel fully fucking aware. Hell, you might even see some goddamn girls at their fucking show at this goddamn fucking point. Don't let that goddamn crowd fool you, man. Just treat it like Slayer. Slayer's got this. <clears throat> Go to a goddamn Slayer show. That needs, shoot, you need fucking <clears throat> whole goddamn army of fucking automatic, uh, automatic rifles of that. Automatic weapons of that can fucking clear out that goddamn canoeness. Treat it like Slayer. You know, they're fucking, they're one of the legendaries, greats, but attracts annoying ass motherfuckers. Don't discredit them, especially the early shit, goddammit. Especially this album down, minimally. I, I think all the rounds are good, but that album down, don't, don't let that crowd fool you, because I'm telling you, you're shooting yourself in the goddamn fool. That's like looking like a, that's like looking at a complete obese fat fuck and being like, he eats pizza. I don't want to eat fucking pizza because I'm going to get fat. No, eat it in moderation, goddammit. Pizza's the most tasty goddamn food in the world. You're missing the fuck out if you're cutting out because you look like, oh, shit, I'm just going to eat some pizza and I'm going to blow up to him. No, you're not. Eat in moderation. Don't be a dumbass. Go exercise, goddamn. You'll be just fucking fine. Kind of, I kind of look at it like that. You're missing the fuck out. You're looking at a bad, bad representative of it. Anyways, I think most people goddamn agree with this goddamn one. So, no introduction. To me, it's the second greatest uh, Swedish death metal album in existence. Uh, I, but I think most people are going to consider it first, and I totally understand why. This member I heard first, but this is. I mean, a, a masterpiece. I listen to it very regularly. In tune, left hand path. Again, if you don't know that, if you don't know that, I literally don't even know what the fuck you're doing. Watch my channel. Um, this one was hard. One of the hardest to pick, get put in there because, like I said about Carcass, Gore Grind, and this band gets lumped in with Carcass and Carcass Ripoff, which I don't. I think I think they're influenced by Carcass, but not by no means Carcass Ripoff. Um, I consider a death metal band. AKA what they called back in the day, dead heavy, dead evil, death metal. Perfect fucking description. Sounds much fucking better than some dumbass Chelsea grin. Fucking deathcore. The fuck does that even mean? It was also hard too because technically by default, I usually say their second album is my favorite. But second album could be considered a little bit more kind of grindcore. So I left it off for that reason. And I got to say in the last three to five years, <laughs> I've been listening to this one the most out of all of them. It is definitely a coin flip, which one I like more, though. But I always used to say Slaughter Cult. But I've been listening to Gore Metal, original goddamn recording, although I do have the uh, reissue bonus disc, the uh, re-recording, which was completely unnecessary. Still enjoyable, but, um, you know, I enjoyed the re-recording, but uh, I, mean, I always play with the goddamn original. It's just cute. It's got the fucking heaviness, and it, it just sounds awesome. I love how goddamn sound. Well, that is a Zoom Gore metal with one of the greatest, absolute greatest metal covers of all motherfucking time. Look at all those goddamn SIGs. I mean, this, this to me is just pure death metal greatness. You know, I remember, uh, I don't know if you remember saying that Matt Harvey said in an interview magazine that uh, his mission was, this was right, I think maybe Anatomy is Destiny was out at, at best. That was the latest, but you might have even on Slaughter Call, that his goal was to keep putting out albums until they put out a classic that is considered stuff like classics, like Symphonies of Sickness, Hell of Weights, Seven Shirts, you know, classic with classics in the metal. For me, now I know the old, old guys that were, you know, around in the 80s, they're going to disagree, but it's just because of the time frame thing. To me, they've done that. Because to me, this is. This is an absolute metal, death metal must classic. I mean, dude, the songs on here are just so stupid fucking good. The lyrics, everything. Necromaniac? Uh, uh, fucking open the abscess. Uh, casket crusher. Going over my faves. It's hard to pick faves, but yeah, favorites would probably be necromaniac, open the abscess, casket crusher. Um, and obviously limb from limb. That's kind of like their fave that they always play. Uh, but the songs that they don't, I even told Matt, dude, songs like post mortem procedures, inoculation, and in my human slaughterhouse, dude, it's got those fucking. Mid pace, not super slow, do me like fucking boring ass bands that call them death self death metal wrist, but dude, just heavy and catchy as fuck to where you just want to jump off the goddamn fucking stage and fucking slam your heel into a canoe's goddamn head. It's got those goddamn riffs. 
stupid fucking good. The dual vocals, dude, raw sewage, easily one of the goddamn greatest low death metal vocals in entire motherfucking history. We've already been over this. You don't know that. Get, get, make sure that's in the collection. I don't want to be seeing a top 20 without it. Otherwise, you look stupid as fuck. Or old, old heads. Like if fucking Scott and I or something did a top 20, that's probably not in his. Acceptable for him because he doesn't come from that generation. By the time that came out, he was fucking 45 years old. <laughs> not that old. Fuck with <laughs> Probably 30. <laughs> so I understand his tops are going to be, you know, yeah, Ultras of Madness, Seven Churches, um, Severed Survival, possibly Mental Funeral, probably some Pestilence. Um, and tomb left hand, but the early shit. I'll slowly arrive. I understand that's gonna be his, and that's and I, that makes sense. That makes total fucking sense. You're around my age or younger. God damn, just God, just God, motherfucker, damn. How could that not be in there? Makes my head explode. Another one, banger, a banger, a banger, a banger, a bangers, and it, it was a fucking. I just picked it by default because they de debut, but I like them equally. First two albums, and then after that, I mean, their, their EPs around the time too were fucking good as well. With these songs like Symbol of Baphomet and shit like that, Mental Emotions. Uh, fantastic as well. I'm talking about full lengths, man. It was pretty much a shit fest after that. Kind of thinking about revisiting Final Chapter as kind of like a Carcass Swan song, like I'll appreciate it as a different band. So I kind of remember liking it, but just it was totally different. Thing about revisiting it, goddamn, but goddamn, not enough attention. Hypocrisy Penetralia. I mean, I. I mean, there's just no words. Yeah, I mean, one of the greatest death metal albums easily in my goddamn book. The vocals, too. Fun fact, too, because I didn't know for years. Granted, I've known for about 12 years now, but I didn't growing up. That's the uh, Caligula singer from uh, Dark Funeral. Magna, um, his name is Macy or whatever the fuck that is. And if, if, I, and if again, if, if J-Dog was misinformed, that's what it says on Metal Archives. That's what someone, what? Hypocrisy. And I look, like, that's, how is that? Yeah, okay, whatever, cool. Um. And I love both. Dark, you know, Dark Funeral is my top 20 black metal band, so goddamn, he knows how to do it right. He knows how to do black metal right and death metal right. Part of what's so great about those hypocrisy albums, honestly, is his voice. It's fucking like a goddamn more guttural, dirty Glenn Benton is the best way I can describe it. Probably the best way I can put it. Goddamn, is a bang on the songs. are just so fucking stupid, goddamn good. But uh, yeah, the Oscar Nelson sent him the second album. I mean, just flip a goddamn coin. Equally as goddamn good. Next goddamn one. Sig's on it as well, goddammit. And my fucking stupid ass had John McEntee sign this, which is not even on. Uh, I mean, maybe I knew at the time, didn't know, or just didn't. But this is when I first met them in 1999. John McEntee, um, he did the tour for Failures for Gods. And this was the only album I owned. I might have bought the Failures CD at the show as well, or soon after. But I definitely bought the uh, tour shirt there. But again, I've already told you, the, uh, my favorite Immolation album, Here and After. With my favorite song being Goddamn Nail to Gold, right after uh, uh, Burn With Jesus, for sure. That's my favorite Immolation album, and definitely one of my favorite albums of all time. So, according to this, shortly after, I did the Goddamn interview with Ross as well. But that was the first album that I bought by them, and then I went back. Because the only three were out. I bought Dawn of Possession probably... Probably less than a year later, but I, cause I remember I had to get it on eBay. I remember at that time it was out of print. Posers at Roadrunner at that point, they were putting out Nickelback and stupid shit. So, next in line. <laughs> Fucking funny. She signed by John McEntee too, but <laughs> rightfully so this goddamn time. Uh, did I tell why? Because uh, John was playing for Immolation, and I guess I didn't. I was 14 years old, keep in mind, so what the fuck? I said anybody signed it, but Ross and Bob and them signed it. Um, so anyways, but uh, yeah, John's the only one I got signed. Yeah, John's the only one on this one I met. I never met Craig Pillard and shit, but one of the heaviest death metal albums of all motherfucking time. That is Incantation, I Want to Go Golfa. Favorite song easily is uh, Devour Death. I mean, all bangers, but uh, Devour Death is my favorite uh, Incantation song of all goddamn time. And definitely, that's in the running for heaviest shit of all fucking time. Fucking, um, this for me makes it very easily. Again, the old heads may disagree, but am I, without a doubt, my favorite release to ever come out of Brazil. Chrissy and Apocalyptic Revelations. Look at those goddamn sigs. Still on there to this goddamn day. Hell's obviously got the privilege to put this out on vinyl. Under a picture of this too, goddammit. You know what? I think we might even have some left. Like 10 or so. You, you need this. Let's just say that. If you like death metal and you like extreme death metal and blasting death metal, I mean, dude, Kings of Killing, 
fucking phenomenal. Creation Scorch, Apocalyptic Victory. Holy fucking fuckski. It don't get any goddamn better than that. Like, you absolutely, positively, no doubt about it, need it. This is my favorite record ever to come out of Brazil. I know the fucking old heads are going to be pissed. It's Sarcophago Iron Eye. It's Sep Sepultura Morbid Visions. It's Volcano Bloody Vengeance. Don't be wrong. I love those, too. I'm a little fucking younger. I got this. And this, as far as extremity, this is started making death metal extreme again. You know, back when uh, fucking Morbid Angel was putting out crappy-ass domination, dumbing it down, toning it down, Carcass putting out hot. Well, team out doing God knows fucking what. Don't even want to know. They were making extreme and fucking just blasting over the fucking top. I'm telling you, death metal masterpiece. I, I think Hells has some stock. Not on CD, but vinyl that we did. <laughs> Buy now or cry later. That's all I got to say. Or, or, or just hang, hang out with the Chelsea Green guys. Goddamn, you look fucking stupid if you don't own that. Whew. Banger of fucking bangers. Yeah, another classic. Gets a lot of respect, but not as much as I think it should. I think it should be, it's hanging out with the Morbid Angels, the Deicides, Cannibal Corpses. Really do. Things should be getting equal amount of respect. Been around technically wrong than them. Their first demo was 86, 87, 87 for sure, but possibly even 86 that they had that kind of like unreleased demo. Um, uh, they've never done a turd album, my book. They've never done, we're back. They've got more goddamn albums than I can even fucking count at this goddamn point. Love and Creation, Retribution. Pick this out because so we're talking top greatest death metal albums of all time. Um, so kind of fit, but it's technically my faves. But like I said, flip a coin between uh, Fine Art of Murder, Retribution, and Envenomed. You know what? All three Envenomed actually might be my favorite favorite. Just love the Dave Kolross drums on that. All blasting, but but literally every song sounds different and sing along fucking greatness. <laughs> but I know a lot of people disagree with that. And I think the old heads and shit would agree. And it's it's kind of a greatness to where it's 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 I, to me I don't understand how you can like death metal and not get into that record that, that it just that doesn't that does not make sense to me it, it just it, it it just it just flat out doesn't so that's my opinion there damn it and because I love it and it is one of my top one yeah, totally. this one buy it easily this would be my top ten we already know this uh, we put this on that when I did L, I showed my LPs top six or whatever. Um, by many people's accounts, and I, I can't even disagree. I, I, I might even say it myself. Greatest death metal album of all time. We're talking studio goddamn albums. Lord Angel, Ultra Madness. Who are those signatures? Petey and goddamn Trey back in, did they put the year? 2001. Was that Gateways Tour? 2001, probably. Yeah, uh, Formos Tour? No, Formos, I saw him 98, Gateways Tour. So that's what I met him, had him sign it. Um, I mean, come on, do I even need to say anything? Um, <laughs> Part of the reasons I like this album more than uh, Abominations. Uh, number one, I do love how David Vincent's voice sounds as well. Although I do like Mike Browning's voice very, very, very much so on uh, on Abomin Abominations. But this album, a lot of it was the same songs, obviously we recorded, but specifically Immortal Rights and Suffocation, the first two opening songs. I absolutely love those songs. Those were considered kind of like the new songs for this album, so they're not on Abominations. So you kind of get, in my opinion. All the songs from Abominations, plus almost like a couple bonus songs in a sense. I know that's not accurate to put it, but you, you know what the fuck I'm saying. Because, you know, like uh, fucking Maze of Torment and shit you get. And uh, Chapel of Ghouls is the easy to say, like, favorites. Um, and I've said that for years. I had to pick one favorite more range. It probably is Chapel of Ghouls, but Immortal Rights and Suffocation might be equally as much. Maybe even Edge of Donaldson. Maybe it depends on the goddamn day, right? Again, God damn it, this list would not motherfucking be complete without the heaviest band in the world. And that's right, we already know. Even the goddamn Danny and Ronnie said in the fucking interview, heaviest band in the universe. First time I picked up by them, first time I heard by them, and as a fucking full length album, um, it is my favorite. Hacked up for barbecue, God damn it. Look at those goddamn signatures from back in the day then, too. Um, House, I consider is kind of probably the heaviest release of all time because it's got the rawness. Um, but dude, this whole fucking album is just a ma goddamn masterpiece of pure fucking heaviness brutality. You know, it's funny. I, I listened to this on the road trip going to uh, Milwaukee Death Fest too. And I was thinking about the idiots and say, it's got more samples than fucking music. I legitimately want somebody to record that. I know somebody, oh, no, I timed it. They, they did. They, flat out, they did. It's impossible because, uh, there's literally goddamn, uh, fucking shit popping up, fucking up my goddamn bits. Shit, they're not popping up my goddamn screen. No goddamn canoe shit. There's, there's a bunch of songs that have no goddamn intros. It's songs like Blood Craving and shit. The music is much longer. 
I think I did time it. The intro was like just under two minutes and the song's five minutes, 13 seconds. So there's three minutes of music, fucking two minutes, whatever. I don't, I didn't memorize it, but that's, that, that's fucking impossible. But as far as favorites on here, songs, my definite favorite is probably the title track, Hack Over Barbecue. Uh, Necro Cannibal, I've always loved. I remember even asking Will for some Necro Cannibal, probably the second or third time I saw him, early 2000s. And he actually dedicated the song out to me. That was cool. So I was like, you going to play some Necro Cannibal? Yeah, he's like, I think we can play that one. And then he said, yeah, this one goes up. Justin, you guys want to hear some fucking Necro Cannibal. It was at the Flying Machine, I believe, that show. That was time. Maybe it might have been at the Peabody show. Forget which one, but uh, I thought that was cool. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, 15 or 16. First time I saw him was 14. Definitely wasn't the first time. I know that. Um, <clears throat> Necro Cannibal, yeah. So uh, Hack the Barbecue. Necro Cannibal, I love Deranged Insanity, uh, phase, Apocalypse Devastation, for sure, but fucking all so goddamn fast and quick and bombed alive, they pretty much always play that live too, and the, the, the ending track too, Mortician, absolute fucking banger of bangers, another goddamn one, and it's not going to be on a lot, it's not the trendiest pick, but the underground heads fucking know what's up. It is definitely my favorite uh, full length by then. Yes, there is some seven inch tracks and shit I like more, but as far as full length studio albums, it is easily my goddamn fucking favorite. That is the goddamn nun. Hell's, Hell's and Holy Fire. It's in a league of its own. I mean, it really is. It's a death metal record that sounds, again, that sounds like fucking nobody. Well, why, why do you guys want another band that sounds like great? Why do you guys want another band that sounds like Asphyx? Another band that sounds like Autopsy? Do you really need that? When this sounds like fucking nobody. Like, literally fucking nobody. It sounds like a goddamn... Best way I can describe it is a death metal version of Venom. Venom trying to play death metal. That's about the, probably the best way I goddamn fucking put it. I mean, dude, the classic Death by the Dead. I mean, how the fuck can you god goddamn like that? And it's every single song is catchy, memorable, and fucking... I mean, Death by the Dead, I, the reason I mentioned that is because I told Don and shit like that, like, sometimes I'll play a show and leave it off. I'm like, I'm like dude, you, that, that's kind of like your ending song. Like, that literally is like your Cannibal Corpse Hammer Smash face. Like, you just don't leave the set without playing it. Well, I don't feel like it ever. I mean, I, I'm sure Alex Webster doesn't feel like playing Hammer Smash face. Doesn't matter. It's your signature goddamn song. That's the way I goddamn see it. Um, it's the Amazon. I mean, I, I don't know. This represents underground metal, too. Again, stuff like, don't be wrong, Dying Fetus, Immolation, Cannibal Corpse, that doesn't represent underground. That represents total fucking death metal greatness, but it doesn't represent underground. That's kind of the difference. So if you also claim you're in a death, underground music, not just the big boys, I just don't understand how you're not in an unslaughter. I mean, granted, most people get it. Most people are. I see the goddamn orders. But definitely the clueless idiots that come over here and say fucking whatever the one guy was fucking saying. The most obscure thing he heard was death leprosy or some shit. And it was just like, whatever. That's all I got to fucking say. This, I mean, it's going to be pretty much the most popular fucking uh, voted on example. It's been the most goddamn popular bring up on all the interviews I've done. And I have to agree. I've always fucking thought it. Yeah, this goddamn possessed seven churches. Literally, I consider this the first death metal record in existence. I don't think it's up for fucking debates. Again, death metal studio album. I don't, it's debatable who's the first death metal band. I know Jeff was kind of comparing it to, it's like, but I don't know, man. I mean, those, those Mantis demos, Death by Metal and Reign of Terror, those were death metal, for sure death metal, came out in 84. Did those demos come out before Possessed Demo? I don't know. So you can make the argument which, who, uh, just kind of started death metal music first. Granted, it doesn't have to end it doesn't really fucking matter. But in my opinion, this is as far as studio full length albums, this is the first death metal album. Here, it's first generation death metal. Yes, it, it progressed from there to the kind of the second generation death metal, trying to take it up a notch, going more extreme with the cannibals, the deicides, the suffocations, the fucking gore fest, all the goddamn bands in the very early 90s, Baphomet, Sinister, you know what I mean? Trying to make it more extreme. I get that. But this is where it all fucking started for death metal, goddamn it. Favorite songs, easily, for me. Granted, it's all killer, no goddamn filler. We already know that. Is uh my favorite song would definitely be Pentagram, and then after that, uh Satan's Curse. Next, goddamn it, everyone in the loop knows this, but you get some of the out of the loopers. It is definitely my favorite by then. Um, yeah, this would be definitely my favorite. Uh, Cross the Sticks and shit is close, but this to me was the European over the Netherlands kind of doing it. 
that should have fucking blown up with the fucking cannibals, the Eastside, Morbid Angels, and Obituaries and shit. I, I just, it was equally as good. As a matter of fact, I like this band more than Obituaries, especially this album. Sinister, Diabolical Summoning. One of the greatest death metal records ever in my book. I mean, I know a lot of guys are going to put the pestilence and the fixes in there. And again, I like some of that shit. Eh, not so much pestilence. Pestilence kind of, eh. It's fine, I guess. Uh, Sphinx, I definitely like the first two albums. Um, they would put that over this, but I, for me, Sinister destroys those bands for me. Um, every album, goddamn it, the, 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 the opening track, killer fucking band, who has no studio albums, which, which they're not in, and that's why they're not in this. Sadistic Intent, that's their opening goddamn track. Um, the title track, Diabolical Summoning, it's, it, everything's fucking goddamn good. Um, and then ending off with Mystical Illusions, so goddamn memorable and sing along. Favorite Sinister album, but I like, uh, so the singer on this is Mike. He sings on the first album, Cross the Sticks. Second album, this. Hate, Bastard Saints. Left the band, kicked to the curb, fucking fired. Whatever the fuck the case was, I don't even, actually, I don't even know. Hopefully one day I'll get an interview with them. And then they put out um, Aggressive Measures. Is it Bart singing on that? Is that his name? I forget. That was a good album. After that, he left. He, so he wasn't used short-lived. By the way, that's the first two. That was, that was when I saw him. It was in Aggressive Measures. It was fan-fucking-tastic, too. Then they put out Creative Killings with Rachel singing, and I like that too. After that, I kind of, I kind of um, jumped ship. I did hear the one after that with Rachel? And I remember being pretty fucking boring. Last but not least, we're on number twenty-two, and it's definitely not motherfucking least, and it is easily my favorite release by them, and definitely this might probably mean me make my goddamn top ten. And that is, it's kind of an EP, but I consider it a full length. It's close enough to goddamn Rain of Blood fucking length. So. um... Rain of Blood's looking at a goddamn full length, so I put it in this, and it's a fucking goddamn at least a 12 inch. Suffocation, human waste. I mean, Infecting the Crips is definitely one of the greatest goddamn death metal songs of all fucking time. The title track, Jesus Wept. I mean, uh, the title, title track, Human Waste, um, is probably my second favorite. After that, probably Mass Obliteration. But every single goddamn song is. Just fucking masterpiece. Complete fucking masterpiece. As opposed to you put on Breeding the Spawn or something, which I do like, the same cannot be said for that. And I'm not talking about the sound or any dumb shit like that. I mean, literally, those actual songs, they're just not as memorable and fucking great. They're just not. So, so that's my top 20 slash goddamn 22. Let me know what the fuck you think. I know there's going to be agreements. I know there's going to be disagreements. And hey, that's what the fuck we're all goddamn here for. We're supposed to disagree on shit. Um... Put it in there if you, whatever yours is. Again, if you, well, I guess we'll go around. Put, whoever the fuck you are. Put it in there. Um, if you had none of those picks, if like, yeah, my top 20, I didn't have any of those. I mean, you can put yours in there in the comments if you want. But I'd be curious how many people, they're like, I didn't have one of those goddamn my top 20. Um, again, some of those uh, albums can be swapped out for others by certain bands. Um, like, mm, like, maybe like, yeah, just like, not too many of them, though. Maybe, um cannibal i can argue but it's probably too to me like deicide like i said i kind of kind of like um uh serpents the most but it's about equal exhumed always said slaughter call it the most but in the last few years it seems like i've been listening to gore metal the most uh so you know, there's a couple that can be kind of kind of swapped but for the most part that is the favorite ones by those bands too but with the you know so but again i wanted to pick just one album got it by each goddamn fucking band so yeah put yours in there Tell me how fucking great my list was, shitty my list was, or fuck, I never even heard of that. If any of these not heard of, I definitely at least recommend going down. I mean, fuck it, for fuck's sakes, just goddamn YouTube it for free at the very fucking least. I thought they're the greatest, so do I recommend them? Well, obviously, fucking yeah. Comments, questions, you know what the fuck I do. Put the comments, box, get it, it's in the morning. Later, goddammit.